Hi, I'm Steve Miller, call me Slim, and this is the Slim Market Week. It's a look back at what happened in the financial markets in the past week, and a look forward to what might happen in coming weeks, and hopefully lots of great ideas and opportunities for you throughout this show. <clears throat> well, the stock market continued to climb to new heights last week, with nary a downtick in the last two weeks. The nature of the market was very Groundhog Day-like each day as one index rested and another index led the way up. Friday, a good example here, as the stock market at an all-time high has the S&P 500 up about four-tenths of a percent and the Russell down about one percent. News of the COVID-19 Delta variant um, causing lockdowns in Australia and Asia only brought brief declines this week, and similarly, Ballard's comments of supply chain bottlenecks and inflation likely to stay up into 1922, and 14.9% increase in housing prices, none of that matters. Even Micron's poor reaction to good earnings didn't stop the NASDAQ from going to new highs, led this week up by Apple. It was a week in which there were simply no sellers at all. Even Friday's strong employment numbers didn't shake up the bond market, nor did it shake up the stock market either. Investors clearly are in a what-me-worry mode. Well, traders are shaking their heads as that uh, poor trading environment they have right now is making it very challenging. You remember the what-me-worry? Well, that was back uh, from Mad Magazine, uh, which was actually published until 1969. Uh, and uh, that uh, is Alfred E. Newman, and his favorite saying is, what me worry? Well, that's a lot like what's going on in the stock market right now. Have I mentioned the insane valuations in the stock market lately? I want to review the Buffett indicator, which I've shown some variations of this. Uh, this uh, source of this uh, is from uh, CurrentMarketValuations.com, and uh, I spent uh, the week researching, of course, as I always do, <clears throat> and I read this article and saw these things, which looked pretty interesting to me. So this was a good article. I encourage you to go to uh, that website, CurrentMarketValuations.com. Uh, this variation of the Buffett indicator, a little bit <clears throat> different. Uh, and uh, it's very clear when we look at this, uh, valuations uh, are high, and I'll explain what this chart is and three other, two other charts I'm going to bring. The article's got seven graphics in there. <clears throat> I'll share three of them, and I think it really makes the point uh, when we look at this. So this is the Buffett indicator, and they rate it, of course, as strongly overvalued. Uh, there is an exponential line in there that suggests market valuation to GDP, uh, which right now fair value they're rating at about 120% of GDP. Um, and you can look at the historical trend line in there, exponential trend line. Uh, and this to me is generous because they're factoring in a lot of things that give it 120% the GDP as fair value. What they take is the aggregate U.S. market value, that's all the stocks, and they look at the annualized GDP. And what they come up with is a ratio of 236%, the market value to GDP. <clears throat> and that's 89% higher than the long-term trend line. Now, you can see in here, uh, the percentages above the long-term trend line. And here you could see back in the 60s and 70s, uh, where it was, you know, mildly above, you know, when you look at that in the area of um, 70, 80 uh, percent uh, above, not 236 percent ratio, as you see there, 89 percent above. 
<clears throat> that you see right there. Uh, here in 2000, when stocks were extraordinarily high, that number got up to about 155. And uh, right now, this is such a massively extreme level, you can see that. Now, I've got more to show you that's really interesting about this. Now, we're going to look at the predictive value of this indicator right here, which is a great chart that they show. They gave a couple of examples here, and I'll help you understand what this means. So this example right there that they're pointing to is August of 1995. The Buffett indicator ratio was 78%. That's four-tenths of a standard deviation below trend uh, when you look at that. And the five-year um, return that takes you out to August of 2000 uh, was was a, uh, a real return on the S&P 500 of 139%. So in this case, it was four-tenths of a standard deviation below trend, and that brought you a big return over the next five years. This example right over here, pointing way over here, is March of 2000. And the uh, Buffett indicator ratio was at 155%. That was in that, that near that 2000 peak. And that was 2.2 standard deviations above the, the uh, trend, the, the trend that I showed you in the previous slide. Five years later, the total real return was minus 30% at that time. So what this essentially says is that when this, when it's well below trend, you get big returns. And when it's well above trend, you get small returns or big losses over the next five years. Where are we right now? Well, see this red arrow that I put right there? We're at 2.9 standard deviations above the trend line. What does that say about the next five years? Well, they're likely to be significantly negative returns when you look at that for the stock market. Well, some people, of course, say that the argument is rates are very low. There's a Fed put. Um, this uh, could buffer the Buffett indicator uh, because maybe it just won't go down as much. Let's take a look at historical uh, interest rates as a comparison. So this is the Buffett indicator and Treasury bond rates that we're looking at in there. And uh, what we're going to see, of course, here is that interest rates have been in a f essentially a 40-year downtrend you see right there. And though there's been a little uptick in here from 40 basis points up to 1.76%, um, we're at extremely low rates right there. And what we're looking at co comparatively is the uh, uh, a look at the a GDP, the, the current Buffett indicator, which is way, way up over here. Uh, that you can see, and that is uh, helped, of course, by lower interest rates in here. So uh, if you look at this peak right over here, that was the internet bubble. The market value to GDP was around normal. The normal interest rate at 10 year is about 6%. So you can see how subnormal uh, we are right now as the Fed is in this great experiment. So yes, that could buffer the Buffett indicator and really keep it from being a total annihilation in the market when the market does start to fall. But I want you to look back over here at 4% yields. Back in the 60s and 70s, you can see right there, and there were still um, four big bear markets during that period that were, you know, 30 something to 50 something percent declines in the stock market with relatively low yields uh, uh, over there, as you can see. So the, the argument may be right that there's craziness going on and the yields are extremely low, but still the market at this wild, wild valuations right over here that you can see. Uh, really looks like uh, at 89% overtrend, you can see that right there, is in the craziest, craziest valuations that we have ever seen. Make the case interest rates are low, but you could also make the case that the likelihood is that the Fed is going to have to change their mind. That's for sure. So the uh, story that this essentially tells is that the market, of course, is extremely overvalued, historically overvalued, and that based on the amount uh, of overvaluation uh, of stock market valuation to the GDP fair value, 89% um, overvalued, 2.9 standard deviations, um, that says that the next five-year returns are going to be in a lot of trouble. 
with uh, economic growth uh, very strong and inflation, of course, very strong as all of that rebounds in a big way and huge disruptions in the market, the Fed essentially putting in a massive excess liquidity. Uh, and if you look at the repo market that's going on, uh, on with almost $1 trillion in reverse repos, it just shows you uh, the massive disruptions that we have in the market going on right now. Yes, there are some technical reasons for that craziness in the repo market, uh, reverse repos near $1 trillion. Uh, Part of that is the end of quarter. Part of that is the fact that the Fed is not producing enough collateral for that market. Um, because they've been uh, spending money out of the general fund because they have built it up so much. So there's been less issuance of government uh, treasury uh, certificates, and that gives the market less collateral for the overnight um, evening up that the banks do in the repo market. All of that is technical. But at the same time, the banks are, you know, I'm reading, they're refusing big deposits from corporations. They're, there's nowhere to put the money. They have to even up every night, and they, they, they're they struggling to do that. And interest rates have actually broken the buck, as they say, below, below zero uh, for a couple of times, slightly. So the Fed is going to have to taper very soon. There's just no way around it. This Fed stance is going to change between growth and inflation and the uh, incredibly uh, huge amount of excess liquidity in the markets. That's going to change. And that's going to change the tone in this market. Also, again, at all-time highs as we speak about that right now. As I showed you based on, I think, very astute um, uh, uh, observations by uh, the uh, uh, company that I just showed you, uh, a st uh, over, uh, stock market overvaluations, that is, uh, I think, uh, a good reason to believe that the next five years or longer could be pretty difficult for the stock market. Right now, the stock market got to our target uh, that we were looking at. Uh, on the upside, uh, but both in time and price. Uh, and we think, of course, we're very close to that peak. I'm going to show you the charts at the end of the show. And that actually could be the peak for the decade. That's based on what I just showed you. Well, review that and act accordingly. Whatever fits for you and whatever your risk parameters are. Looking at this, well, I think it takes some deep thought. Stock market for the week, uh, it uh, mixed a higher, we'll call it, as the S&P 500 is up about one and a quarter percent, the NASDAQ two and a half, the Dow up about a half a percent, and at the same time, the low cap struggling this week, Russell down about one percent. Bond market, 30 years up one and three quarter points. The 10-year yields fall nine basis points to 1.44%. We've told you that we believe that yields are going to continue falling in here for about the next month. You can see our review in future speak on Wednesdays uh, about that. Gold market about unchanged. Silver gets a rebound of about 30, 30 cents. The dollar, uh, which I'm going to show you some interesting analysis coming up in there, uh, is uh, up about 7 tenths percent on the week, and the conditions, I believe, are positive for the dollar right now. Uh, and the oil market gains again to recovery highs, about a dollar twenty, as OPEC Plus uh, comes up with some agreement in here, which looks like slower increases, though uh, some increases uh, in production coming. Coming up, uh, we're going to look at the uh, preview of our international market member video, uh, and we're going to have a, I'm going to show you gold versus the dollar, a long-term review that you're going to be very interested in. I'm going to show you an amazing offer that we're bringing right now. Don't speed through it because, man, is it fantastic. And uh, I'm going to give you our stock market one to three month view uh, with a special look at the NASDAQ NDX analysis because I've gotten a lot of questions about the amount of decline that I'm expecting in the NASDAQ in a correction that I believe is coming pretty soon. So that is uh, the opening. I want to make sure you go to the AskLim.com website. Explore that. Make sure you subscribe. You could even be a free subscriber just to catch up on some of the things we're doing. Make sure you go to YouTube uh, and subscribe to that channel, uh, unless if you're watching it uh, right now on YouTube, which is possible. Make sure you click the notification bell. 
so that you know when we put up one of our many videos every week. And make sure you give us a thumbs up, like this video, because that helps us with Google. And follow us on Twitter, Ask Slim. Uh, if you have any questions about our memberships, the things I'm going to be showing you uh, coming up here, make sure you write to Matt at AskSlim.com and uh, he will really be able to help you. Members, make sure if you have any website questions or membership questions, write to team at askslim.com, and they'll be able to help you with that. All right, this is going to be a preview of a member video. Uh, RV does this every other week, uh, and then every other week he looks at uh, certain stock sectors, which is fantastic. This uh, looks at uh, uh, 10 different international markets, and we bring a couple of them as a preview uh, when we do this. And he's going to be looking at the uh, Aussie market, the ASX, and the French market, the CAC 40, or as they say, CAC Uh And uh, I think you will love this analysis. It's a great example of our cycle analysis of which RV is one of the experts in the world. So uh, great for you to watch this. So this is the weekly and daily grid. These charts are built on TradingView. On the left we have the weekly chart and the right we have the daily. Let's go ahead and open up the weekly chart. On the weekly chart we have a dominant weekly cycle which is then broken up into these minor half cycles that you see right here. We have added in these vertical lines to show how the key weekly lows and daily lows have formed relative to the idealized timing which means relative to the troughs of these cycle brackets that we have drawn in on these charts. And overall these cycles really have been quite clear going back multiple years. What we see here is that we had been in this intermediate term rising phase and are really still in that rising phase. Note that there is a mid-cycle low due. That mid-cycle low is due right around now. And you can see there is a little bit of a mini flag forming here in the ASX 200. So that's the core pattern that we're seeing here. And what this favors is that a low would form relatively shortly and then we would get one more push back on the upside here in the ASX 200. Now on the upside, we are looking for a move up to this major 100 FIB here at 75.59 prior to getting uh, any more increased risk of a move on the downside here as we would have two cycles pushing down with the dominant cycle pushing down as well as the minor cycle pushing down. Now the next key low is due if we bring the cursor over here. Let's delete that. The next key low is due 9.13 to 11, 1. If we shift over to the daily chart, we can zoom in here so that we have the cycles at the bottom. We had been in this short-term rising phase here. You can see that this daily low that formed was barely even visible, and then we got a nice rally there. But you can see we have formed a high very likely in this cycle and are in this short-term corrective period. The next short-term low is due July 9th to uh, July 22nd. So really looking for this pullback to form the mid-cycle low and then to get another impulse back on the upside. So overall bias here for us is uh, really neutral to negative right now. There isn't a whole lot uh, likely on the downside and we'd be more interested in watching for this uh, short-term low to form to set up the next move back up. So overall, a pretty decent pattern here in the ASX 200 and likely to see some choppy to uh, downward bias here for the next couple of weeks. So this is the weekly cycle chart. For the CAC 40, we have this dominant weekly cycle, which is broken up into these minor half cycles. And what you see here is pretty decent consistency here in the CAC 40 with key lows that have formed pretty close to the idealized timing going back all the way to 2017. And all that simply means is that the cycle rhythms have been pretty consistent here as well. What's going on is that we are in this intermediate term rising phase here. You can see the nice rally off of these two uh, long hammers that really formed here. And that really did form the key low at uh, 61.50 and we are in the rising phase that I mentioned. You can see we are seeing some signs of failure here. Now, what I want to highlight is that there is a mid-cycle low to around the early September time period. So keep that uh, time period in your mind as we shift over to the daily chart. So these are the daily cycles here in the CAC 40. Let's modify this axis here a little bit. 
on the daily chart, what we really see here is a breakdown on the daily. We have a move through the key daily cycle low at 65.19 after a very muted rally here on the upside. As you can see, what this says is that the high has likely formed early in this cycle, and we are in this corrective period here for the rest of that cycle. The key short-term low is due July 20th to July 28th. So that's really the, the timing for the next short-term low. It'll be key for this to see a breakdown in this daily momentum. You can see it, it has now neutralized. That's why we have these gray colored bars. Watch for this slim ribbon to turn red to confirm that shift from positive momentum to negative momentum. On the downside here in this next short-term corrective period, we're only looking for a move down to this intermediate term 50 to 61.8. So that's from 64.10 or so to 63.47. What I wanna do is just look a little bit forward here. And you can see the next key daily low is really where that mid-cycle low is likely to form uh, on the weekly here as well. So what we're looking for is if this plays out as I've drawn, one more little rally and then another move back down. So overall, it does look like the highest odds favor some downside risk here in the, the CAC 40. I'm gonna take a look here at gold versus the dollar. This is kind of a review of the long-term analysis that we showed many months ago. And I think it's time to look at this again. Of course, there are many gold bugs, gold bulls out there. Uh, that I think uh, are going to um, be uh, looking at this and saying, wow, um, maybe I need to look hard at uh, my positions right now. And let's take a look here as uh, we take a look at this analysis. I'm going to start out right here on this chart. This chart is a chart of gold versus the dollar. So the gold market is the candlestick chart, as you see right in here. And uh, that uh, shows you um, the incredible rise, of course, that we had from 2000 area right over there in the 200s, where it made it way up here to 1900 right there. And uh, what we're looking at here, that line that you see right there is the dollar. Now, the reason I'm showing this chart is because I want you to see the gold versus dollar comparison, the correlations between them. The average correlation coefficient is about minus 70%. That means that the gold versus the dollar, they move in opposite directions about 70% uh, of the time or 70% of the amount. The range actually, because there are time periods when they move together, is about plus 45 on the, cor on the correlation coefficient, to uh, which is very, very rare, brief periods of time, to about minus 90%. In other words, it's almost an exact inverse correlation many uh, much of the time. So that's really important because if you can analyze one, you're actually analyzing the other or the inverse. Uh, when you look at that, because it will be just about always inverse. A good example right in here where the gold market was ticking up strongly, that was right over here where the dollar market was ticking down strongly. So uh, that, that happens uh, a lot. I want to look at that a little bit closer in here, uh, the dollar versus gold. And I, I'm going to grab a, a different drawing set in here uh, as we look at the monthly versus the dollar. So there you go. All of a sudden, there's a lot on this chart as we look at cycle analysis. The cycle analysis in here, what I'm looking for and what I really want you to focus on is that there are harmonics in here. In other words, there's a dominant cycle. And when you get towards the end of the cycle, there's a correction that you can see right over there. There are minor half cycles that we have drawn in there, and there are a really minor quarter cycles. So it's kind of a dominant intermediate and quarter cycle. When you get to where all three of them are going down together, you get market corrections that you see right over there. They're a little bit steeper than other corrections. The final quarter right in here that you could see, a steeper correction right there. The final quarter right over here, you can see a steeper correction right over there. And look what's coming up right now. Now, what's important to look at is the fact that the rally phase right in there, you can see, 
came up and failed quickly. That's what happened right in here. The final quarter came up and failed quickly. And when that happens, you're pretty much sure that the rest of this is going to be a struggle for the market. And that's where we are right now. Now, these green areas right over here that I highlighted are the opposite, inverse correlation. So while this was correcting with three cycles pushing down, the dollar market was moving up sharply, as you can see, which is typical. Here you could see this correction right over here, three cycles coming down. Look at this line on the dollar exploding to the upside right over here. So there's a correlation but, uh, that I'm showing you, or inverse correlation, in, in these periods of bigger declining phases uh, that where the dollar will move strongly inverse to gold. This one right over here, look at that sharp move up in here in the dollar while gold was moving down in this fourth minor cycle right in here. And that actually pr brought the dollar up from about uh, uh, 80, 82 all the way up here to uh, getting up over 100. So th that was uh, a very, very strong up move for the dollar. So where are we right now? Well, we're right over here where the gold market should be correcting. That would probably mean that the monthly chart, and we're looking at a monthly chart here on the gold market, that it would be showing you on the dollar that there would be a probability of a period of advance in there. So what I want to do is show you how that works and switch this over to dollar sign DXY right in here. And here is the amazing uh, analysis on the dollar, monthly analysis that we're looking at. Cycle harmonics in here that you can see we put in there. If you want to learn about this, go to asklim.com to our cycle workshop page. And uh, you can see in here where um, the big advances came that I showed you while the gold market was getting hit. And here's where we are right now. See the bottom in here, the important bottom and the big upside move? The important bottom and the big upside move in the dollar? Look where we are right now. I actually have this uh, projected out, and I'll zoom in for you to see, uh, to a, uh, a modest advance. And here's the dollar ticking up as these cycles are now pushing up. And this points to, well, this is 94 and a half. This right over here, if it wants to be stronger, is around 96. And this gets up to about 97.80 right there. It is reasonable to expect that the dollar during this rising phase is going to move up very strongly. And there could be a lot of reasons that support this fundamentally, especially the government tapering could bring demand for dollars. Uh, and that uh, would be a good, a good reason for it to go up. Also, the uh, other economies in the world are really at a different phase than the U.S. market is with our growth here exploding to the upside where the other ones are really lagging that could you know push interest rates up also uh, when uh, you look at that. And of course uh, um, there's a, a shortage of, of treasuries around right now. We'll see how that settles uh, into this also. But this uh, really makes a, pace, a case for a big upside move. I want you to note right over here when at this price right over here last year we were projecting a large drop right over during this case and we were in this area where the dollar should be falling and it did. Same thing happened over here and this was kind of a mid-cycle area where it did that also but right now we're in the rally area. So for I'm showing you this big upside move potential in the dollar right there and if it gets to 96 that's going to be a pretty big upside move and the gold market right in here uh, as uh, I look at forward slash GC, the inverse of that where this points to the downside. And you can see how the cyclical patterns are suggestive. The dollar is ready to move up. 96 may be reasonable. And the gold market is likely to struggle until July or mid-year of 22. That does give you a picture in here of the gold market that uh, actually could be a lot of trouble for gold and uh, what looks like a good, good period in here coming for the dollar. So I hope you enjoyed that analysis. I actually enjoyed putting that together for you.
Coming up, I'm going to bring you this amazing stock market analysis where I'm going to give you some analysis also on the NASDAQ. Uh, and I think you're going to find that extremely interesting. But don't go away. And don't speed forward. Because this special, you do not want to miss. We are announcing that the special level 3 trial is available right now. This is for first-time subscribers and upgrades. If you're a uh, level 1 or level 2 on our site, you can upgrade and get these specials. You're going to get uh, unbelievable pricing, and you have to beat this price before the increase that we're going to have. We are raising our prices because our development that we're going into uh, have done and coming is just amazing, and there are costs to that, and we are expanding our offerings constantly. We're going to bring you uh, for level 3, the Slimulator Ranking System. I'm going to show you what that looks like. 84 best symbols, with cycle analysis, momentum analysis, bias conditions, and more. Our trade ideas, we do one new one every day with an amazing instructional video and great results we've had in that. Uh, level 4 custom chart requests, you're going to be able to see, and you can see now, the archive. And there are many of those that go up every week that our Level 4 members request, and you'll be able to see those charts in static form and see that amazing analysis you will get our chart streams. These are live, multiple time frame charts with our proprietary indicators on there. Four time frames that it looks at. I'll show you what that looks like also. And you will be invited to our exclusive live webinars uh, where you can bring your general questions on trading issues, trade planning, chart analysis, all of that. All of that included. Let's look at what this looks like in here. This is the Slimulator ranking system of the 84 best symbols. You get amazing things in here. You're going to get our directional bias, which essentially is an algorithm built out of all of these multiple time frames that you see in here. These are all sortable uh, when you look at that. And you're going to get our outlook for the next three to six weeks, which shows you what the conditions are. In the case of Boeing in here, technical analysis is mixed and it favors awaiting further market messages. It is slightly bullish. If you look over here at Costco, it says that we have positive conditions and it favors alongside bias. And then all our charts are available here with all of our analysis in there. And there is more uh, when you dig deeper inside of this. The next thing you'll be able to see is our key levels in there, where we tell you what our key uh, support low level is right over there and what the breakout level would, would be, and this one was confirmed on the upside. So we share key levels with you in there, and what we also share with you is um, our uh, cycle low date. So in other words, if uh, the market is uh, likely to correct what the time frames are that uh, you're likely to see in the dominant or minor cycles uh, on the weekly and on the daily. So you get our key dates uh, in there. So you'll be able to look at the charts. You'll be able to scroll through the uh, symbols and see which are the strongest and weakness and even get our option bias indicator. Uh, in there, which I think is just a, a fantastic indicator. So all of that in our Slimulator ranking system. The uh, trade ideas, which come out uh, every day or just about every day, uh, this is an example of what a trade idea uh, looks like. And you can see in here MGM, uh, this uh, was a um, is presently inactive. So we're showing you an older one as an example. This is a long bias there, uh, and it was a short-term trade set up and we were looking for a reversal at the cycle timing. That's the type of trade that it was. Favorable entry range, the projected range, uh, and the reevaluation level. Where is this trade no longer meeting our analysis uh, where we will pull it and say, you know, it no longer uh, it looks like a good setup. So this is uh, great. And we give you the technical briefing in here of what really we're looking at. But if that isn't enough and it doesn't make sense to you, what's going to happen is you're going to be able to get the trade idea and you'll be able to watch it. RV teaches you around every single one of these. Shows you the charts. You'll get those. You're going to get the charts included with cycle analysis, support and support resistance, projections, momentum, proprietary indicators on there in RV's amazing instructional video on every trading idea. You're going to learn cycle analysis from the world's experts uh, on our site right over here, and RV does 
just an amazing job on that for trade ideas. And you're going to also get, and this just doesn't stop, our chart streams. These are live Ask Slim charts with our proprietary indicators on multiple time frames for all styles of trading and investment. Uh, there right now are um, seven streams that we have. There are more coming. SPX, NDX, Russell, SPY, QQQ, IWM, and GLD. And uh, these are our indicators. You don't need a special platform. Uh, you just click on the site uh, on, a, on the window and then click on that play right over there. And you have the live charts running for you with a, with our uh, weekly, a daily, uh, our two-hour, and our 15-minute analysis on there and proprietary indicators. Uh, you can see in that where you have a two-hour uh, uh, upward trend in here that's very clear. And these momentum signals telling you to the long side. Well, that says when the 15-minute gets the support, it's likely to be moving up again. So you get a good example of that daily chart strong, two-hour chart strong weekly chart strong all of that as you're looking at the nasdaq right over there uh just uh, amazing uh when on these chart streams and more of those coming you're going to get everything there that i showed you plus you're going to get everything in levels one and two the sir daily snapshot uh which is great deep short-term analysis on the indexes daily the sar daily intraday live grid which gives you 15 minute charts with support resistance acceleration zones the reversal scout on the s p 500 nasdaq and the russell you're going to get our weekly future speak show i take this deep dive into 24 futures and i really do a tremendous amount of teaching in there on futures and the indexes car complete library over 500 videos 10 categories many put in there weekly slimulator momentum tracker this is for longer term holdings over a thousand symbols multiple time frame algorithms that are built into that give you the condition for three to six month outlook our weekly spider select etf report our trade planning worksheets that we offer you where you can organize prioritize save and track your own analysis all of that can you imagine last call on the special beat the price increase we're going to give you one third off on the three months that's 200 bucks 200 dollars and 25 cents that's 66.75 a month for all of that instead of 99 dollars a month so you're going to get one third off uh, and it is an amazing deal prices are going up it is time for you to get in on this right now you will be grandfathered in in other words you, you, you there will be no price increase not for you uh, if you sign up, not for any of our current members. The prices are not going up for you. You will be grandfathered in. It would be only for new members on the, uh, later in July when we raise these prices. So go to AskSlim.com. Click on the link at the top of the main page for the special offer. If you want more info uh, on that, on the specials for all levels, uh, it is last call before all of those price increases. And you can write Matt at AskSlim.com if you have any trouble signing up or you have any questions this amazing offer is only going to be here for a very brief period of time please do take advantage of that raise your probability of success in the markets we always say your success is our success all right we're going to look at the s p 500 for a one to three month outlook with a special look at the nasdaq when we look at this and discuss um, why 13% uh, uh, is what we're going to look at, why a negative 13% uh, is uh, what we expect uh, for a coming correction uh, in the stock market. So let's move over into the SPY. I'm going to mm, reduce that ch chart right over there, which was gold. If you didn't see that uh, gold dollar analysis, please go back and watch that. You're going to find it very interesting. So here is cycle analysis on the S&P 500. We, for weeks and weeks and weeks, have been talking about the market in still in good shape, and potentially our initial target was the SPY moving up to 423 with a probability or possibility, let's say, of getting up to 430 to 432. It is now 432.97 at its peak, uh, today uh, at all-time highs. These are the cycle analysis in here. This is the big dominant cycle way out over there. 
This is the intermediate cycle there, and these are the minor uh, half cycles that you see there. Now, when you get into the late portions of the cycle, you get corrections. This was a massive correction right over here, of course, because this was the COVID pandemic panic, looking back over here. This correction right over here, this little four weeks in the downside, was actually 10.8% down. This one, depending on which index you look at, between 5.8 and 7% down in a very strong condition. Now, the S, the, uh, on the SPX, there is another cycle that I don't have in here that is pushing to the downside right in here. That's joining these. It did also right over here. And when that happens, the potential for a decline of a greater consequence increases. And I'll show you that when I switch over to the NASDAQ. But let's talk about where we are right now as the market moves up to this area in here that we thought was a, a possibility for it to get up to. Now, you will note this top green line right up there is now projecting the possibility of 436. These are minor FIB extensions that come off of this minor cycle. And over here is 445. These are the next two numbers if the market wants to panic on the upside and get up there. Of course, that is always a possibility. Now, we've had the corrective yellow oval here for a long time, and I've talked about this with our members, the importance of not jumping the gun, and we have not yet been bearish, and I have documented all of my last uh, 10 weeks of videos where we were pointing up to these areas over here. It was likely the market was going to move up into late June or early July, and uh, that's, I'll put that together in a little montage uh, so you could see the progression of the analysis. I'll share that probably in the next couple of weeks. Uh, and uh, then getting to this period over here where the risks pick up. Now, even when you look back at that COVID decline, uh, that was uh, only uh, about four weeks on the downside. This one over here, 6% was four weeks. This one over here, you know, 30-something percent was four weeks. This was four weeks. This was about three weeks. And if we're looking for a decline into August, mid-August, late August here, that means the market could actually hold up yet for another couple of weeks before it decides to come down. Our momentum condition has turned up again, though it's been very flat. The momentum in the shorter term are all positive on all of the indexes. So the conditions are such that it has not given a sell signal yet, any indication of any selling. As I said in the beginning of the show, the last two weeks have barely had a downtick, as you can see right over here. So the market is likely to peak. It is likely to have a correction that will last somewhere between three and five weeks. And our expected correction on the S&P 500 is about 11%. That would be about an average correction, and that would take it down over here uh, to the major 23 is where we're projecting it down, which is about 382 on the S&P 500. And of course, everybody's asking, well, the Fed's holding it up. There's no way it could fall. The market is way too strong. And all of that, you know, is, you know, every, at every one of these peaks that we're talking about, it was basically the same thing. So the declines come. And if you watch the beginning of the show, the valuations in the market are absurd. So that could bring a pretty good decline. So I want to look at the NASDAQ right now because I've had a lot of questions about, well, what makes you say 13% on the NASDAQ? Where does that come from? What is this timing? How do we make any sense of that? Well, that's, those are great questions. So let's look here at the NASDAQ. And I gave you a little bit of a different look here where we're going to go way back here to 2013, as you can see. Now, I put that those same uh, harmonics uh, on this chart that are very similar, similar to the S&P 500. So I want you to see there's basically a minor third in there. And you can see the minor third bottomed here and here. And you can see the same thing uh, right in here and right in here. So what are these periods where the market gets into bigger corrections? It's when there is a nesting of these cycles, like here and here. So back here in 2014, that was a, a decline of about 10%. You can see right in there. It's, it's so small you could barely see it. This right over here was a decline into the nesting period of 18%. 
This was uh, that mild 6% pullback in there in this extremely strong market condition. And this one was the taper tantrum for the NASDAQ. It fell 23.7%. This is important because we could get into a taper tantrum pretty pretty soon. And this is your pandemic right over here where it, where it fell over 30%. These are all periods where the cyclical patterns were nesting, as you can see right in there, where the corrective forces of the dominant cycle pushed down. You can learn about this by going to AskLim.com, go to our workshop page, and you can see a, a video there which talks about this. So let's take a little closer look in here. And that is, again, 23.7%, 30%, you know, the taper tantrum, the pandemic. I don't expect it to be anything like that right now. I think the market, uh, there's too many people waiting to buy, but a correction is still likely. And that might make for a much choppier market top being made out here for coming months. But in the meantime, we're getting into this area right over here. Nesting right over here it comes down into mid to late August. We're expecting three to five weeks on the downside to about that 23.6%. This fell to the 78% right there, 23%. This fell close to the 78%. We're only looking for the 23% here. That's nothing. And if it fell there, that would be 12.7% on the downside. So that's where we get this on the NASDAQ. It's, it's very mechanical analysis uh, when we look at this uh, of these major cycles. And I think there's a wow factor when you look at this. And it offers what I think is a high probability that the stock market is going to be moving into a correction soon. Whether or not it's a bull market top, we don't know yet. And we won't know that until we correct and then see what the next rally looks like. And when the correction is over uh, in you know, late August, early September, right over here, we'll be in more rising phases. And look what these rising phases did. You can see they were monstrous on the upside uh, as we've been in this bull market since uh, 2009. That means that the market will have to tell us it's weakening and things will have to change. Right now, we're not talking about that. All we're talking about is this 12-year bull market and massively high valuations, which are likely to bring steeper corrections and maybe bringing a major market top. If you watched at what I looked at in the um, beginning of the show at the valuations of the stock market, it really says to me that there is a pretty good probability uh, that the market is going to have a lot of trouble over the next five years. But we're just talking now about a few months. One to three month view, we'll be looking for a peaking in here and getting into this correction. The expected drop is about 11% on the S&P 500 or about 13% on the NASDAQ. If the market is much stronger and it's only like a 6% decline, then these are the supports that are going to hold it in that period right over there and the market will tell us it will stop falling in that area and we'll know that the conditions if that happens are such that very likely you're going to be moving to a new high after that so uh, that i think is a good look at the next one to three months a market that is moving up very very sharply to the upside in here and uh, that is our one to three month look uh, of the uh, stock market and I think it was a pretty good look at that and uh, I hope that you looked at it and found this analysis to be interesting and maybe that um, cycle analysis is making a lot of sense that is a look at the uh, analysis and that is the end of the show I hope that you have found this incredibly interesting. I want you to make sure you go to our website uh, and uh, do sign up there. Um, if you're watching it on YouTube, subscribe to the channel. Make sure you give us a thumbs up. Follow us on Twitter at Ask Slim. Any, any questions about memberships, write Matt at AskSlim.com. I want you to be so unbelievably careful. It is so crazy out there. And I'm always wishing you great trading.